Hello and welcome everyone to my presentation about the Secure Substation. My name is Christoph Hampel. I am Cybersecurity Engineer for Energy Automation Systems at Smart Infrastructure Digital Grid in Nuremberg. Today I would like to present to you some aspects of the Secure Substation. I will start with the motivation and give a short introduction to the Secure Substation concept. Afterwards, I will go into more details about the topics role-based access control, digital certificates and security logging and monitoring. Let's start with the motivation and a short introduction about the secure substation. On the one hand, we see an increasing digitalization of operational technologies, including energy automation systems. Some examples are an increased connectivity and integration of systems and components due to the usage of Ethernet networks. We see more standard IT components such as Windows operating systems or virtualization technology. We also see OT environments connected with cloud applications. Remote access from outside protected networks is already a common use case. And of course, big data and the IoTs becoming part of our domain. These trends provide greater flexibility to the operators, but they can also increase the attack surface of energy automation systems if they are not properly implemented. We also must consider a continually changing threat landscape. These are some examples from the German BSI. For example, distributed denial-of-service attacks are used to overload systems and make them unusable. Malware can find its way into systems via USB keys or via the network. And we even have already seen targeted malware developed specifically for energy automation systems. We have seen intrusions via remote access solutions to OT networks. And also comprising of extranet and cloud components human error and sabotage, and also social engineering and phishing. How can we address this complex threat landscape? It is important to implement a holistic approach. This includes people, processes and technology. Employees of involved parties must have security awareness and have an understanding of cybersecurity. Security processes must cover the whole life cycle and implement solution and operational requirements. The technology must support the cybersecurity protection goals and comply with industry standards. These three categories must be addressed in the used products, during the solution implementation and during operation. For example, substation automation products must provide certain cybersecurity features. The solution provider must build a secure solution and implement the cybersecurity controls. The operator must make use of the cybersecurity capabilities during operation. Because the cybersecurity chain is only as strong as its weakest link. As part of the holistic approach, we have developed a secure substation blueprint. It is based on the leading cybersecurity standard for industrial control systems, IEC 62443. The blueprint includes the system integrator process according to IEC 62443 2 4, as well as the technical solution according to IEC 62443 3 3. The technical solution includes a wide range of cybersecurity measures, as you can see on the right such as access control and account management, security logging and monitoring, system hardening, security patching, backup and restore, malware protection, system architecture and secure remote access. I now want to go into more detail about three topics that help us to build secure substations. The first topic is role-based access control. In the energy automation domain, this is based on IEC 62351-8. Let me explain the concept based on this example. We see three different persons, Tom, Mary and Joe. The standard uses the term subject for the persons. 
all of them want to perform a specific task on an IED. Each of the persons is assigned to one or more roles depending on the job profile. This assignment is dynamic and can change, e.g. when an employee gets a new job role or retires. The roles are predefined in the standard. There are more roles than shown in this example. Each role is granted specific rights on specific objects in the target device. And this role to write assignment is static and is implemented inside the IED. Let's look at the example. User Tom has the job role administrator, which grants him the right to configure the firmware in the IED. <coughs> this allows him, for example, to install a new firmware version on the IED. The following methods are part of the role-based access control concept. The first step when Tom wants to connect to the device is the authentication. This means he provides the username and password. The second step is the authorization. This means that Tom is assigned the role administrator. Both authentication and authorization are centrally managed e.g. in a central radio server or active directory. Third, the access in the device. In this example, Tom is granted the right to update the firmware. To accomplish this, it is a prerequisite that the device supports the role-based access control methodology. The great advantage of this concept is that we do not have to manage users, passwords, and role assignment in every device separately, but only in one central location. At the same time, we can restrict the access of each user to a required minimum, which is called the principle of least privilege. Let's move on to the second topic, digital certificates. Digital certificates in energy automation can be used for a wide range of security controls. For example, identity management. Digital certificates can provide a unique identity to personal and products for authentication. Access control. In the role-based access control concept, certificates can be used to specify the role for users. We can make use of certificates to implement secure communication based on cryptographic mechanism. It is possible to validate the source and integrity of OT software and firmware to prevent malware infections. Last but not least, certificates can be used to validate the integrity of process data or configuration settings. Let's have a look at one of many use cases of digital certificates, network access control. It is defined in the IEEE 802.1x standard. 802.1x provides access control to Ethernet networks. The security mechanism is applied to dedicated switch ports. The target is to prevent unauthorized devices connecting to a switch port. It is especially useful for locations with less physical security. In this example, we have the following setup. There is an IED that shall be allowed to connect to the network. It is connected in line mode to a switch. The switch is capable to forward 802.1x requests to a radio server. The radio server has the information which certificates are allowed to connect. A client certificate has been requested and installed on the IED. The simplified authentication process looks as follows. During startup of the IED, it sends an access request with the client certificate. The switch forwards this request to the radio server and the radio server checks if the client certificate and the access request are valid. The radio server provides a feedback to the switch that the authentication was successful and the switch will grant access to the network. Only the IED with the corresponding private key will be granted access by the radio server. In a scenario where someone unplugs the IED and connects any device without a valid certificate instead, it will not be able to connect to the network. The whole process 
happens automatically without any user interaction. The usage of certificates requires a proper certificate management. To manage certificates in a substation, we need some tool. This tool should reduce the complexity for the operator and ensure the security of the whole certificate management process. Certificates must be issued, renewed after a defined period of time, or revoked if necessary. New certificates requests must be authenticated. CCAM GridPass Certificate Manager can automatically manage certificates for devices that support the automatic mechanism. For other devices, certificates can be managed manually via an intuitive UI. Let's move on to the last topic, security logging and monitoring. Logging and monitoring is important to get an overview about the security posture of a system and to detect any malicious activity in the energy automation network. This includes, amongst others, the monitoring of the role-based access control solution and the usage of digital certificates. As a prerequisite, it is important to collect the log information from all components of the energy automation system. This includes protection relays, network devices, as well as Windows operating systems and software applications. For this purpose, all components in the substation are configured to send their security-related logs to a central server. This is implemented via the syslog protocol. For example, the logs contain information about failed or successful login attempts, configuration changes in an IED or firewall logs, and a lot more. A syslog server collects and consolidates all these logs. In this state, the substation is SIEM ready because it provides all it takes to be connected to a SIEM system. The same concept can be applied to a control center. The large amount and variety of log files requires an automated analysis. Therefore, the syslog servers forward the logs via a secure channel to a central security information and event management system. This SIEM can collect logs from several substations at the same time. The logs are stored and continuously analyzed to detect anomalies and attacks in the connected systems. In case the SIEM system detects an attack or anomaly, an alert is created and the operator is being informed. The SIEM system also provides dashboards to get an overview about the current status. For compliance purpose, regular reports can be created automatically. To perform all these tasks, the SIEM must be able to normalize the logs from different log sources. Equally important is a rule set that is designed for OT environments and suits this for the specific solution. Let's summarize the benefits of a logging and monitoring solution. All security-relevant logs are collected and analyzed in a single system. This is a prerequisite to correlate the log information from different components and to get a full picture of the security status. Detect anomalies and security incidents. The main purpose of a security logging and monitoring solution is to detect security incidents. This is achieved by continuous analysis of the incoming logs. An OT-specific set of alert rules ensures that content of the logs is interpreted in the right way. Logs are stored for compliance and incident analysis. Standards and regulations require the storage of log files for a certain period of time. In case a security incident occurs, the stored logs are a useful source of information for the incident analysis. In case a security incident is detected, the system can inform the operator via an alert and provide detailed information about the incident. Dashboards can provide a condensed view about the system status. Finally, reports can be created automatically in order to comply with regulatory or operational requirements. 
Now I come to the end of my presentation with a short summary. First, cybersecurity technologies are the foundation for a secure substation. The used components must support state-of-the-art security concepts. Role-based access control, certificates and logging are just three examples. Second, I'd like to highlight the importance of the holistic approach. It's not only about using the right security technology, but also the way it is integrated into the operational processes and the interaction with people. It's important to consider people, processes and technology at all times in the system lifecycle. Thank you very much for your attention. Please also visit our virtual cybersecurity booth to get more information.